welcome to Logan Sounds Off, where I talk about books, music, and a whole lot more. I'm your host, Logan Kelly. Radio. Um, yeah, I really like radio in the sense that I love the whole idea of music, but I also love sharing music with other people. Yeah. I more enjoy listening music um, with other people than listening by, by myself. That's why when I started to listen to the John Creedon show, it really inspired me because I really love John Creedon and the way he talks and the way he presents the show. Yeah. So... What is it? Um, what is it in particular? Is is John? John is in Cork. Are you in Cork? No, I'm actually in Kildare. Oh, are I, you? I, I'm listening through the um, my stereo over there. Yeah. And I remember what I would do is I'd be asking my mum and dad all the time. I don't know what to listen to at night because all my CDs I would have listened to over and over again. So they once mentioned jo- John Creedon to me. And I decided I'd give him a listen. And I've been listening to him for three years, I think, straight now. What age are you now? I'm 10. Oh, my goodness. You're a lifelong fan. John is a great fella. Have you ever met him, actually? I have, and I've spoken to him. Yeah, he's a lovely man. Yeah, I, I just really enjoy the likes of John Creedon in the and afternoon. And the music that he plays is, is phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, I was actually reading there. It's quite like yours, some of the stuff, like Pink Floyd. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it's brilliant the way many DJs like John Creedon and you that I was reading about, they have a wide variety of music where the likes of other radio stations, they stick at maybe, like, I know Nova's based on rock, but I mean, some radio stations on their shows, they have a variety and then sh- some don't. I prefer the ones with different songs on it. Yeah. Especially with John Creedon. It's more explore for me. Oh, it's listen, fun. if you want to learn about music, listening to John is absolutely the way to go because John, and there's another boy on RT Lyric called John Kelly, and he I, plays yeah, really I listen to him. well. You do? Good. Yeah. He is Go like on. all, um, like, world music and Arabic music. Yeah, good stuff. You know your your, your things. Excellent. I remember my mom and dad said when John Creed was on the weekend, they'd say, they'd say to me, here, listen to John Kelly. And I'd go, John Kelly, if it's already a lyric, it's probably going to be classical music. Now, I've never been the <laughs> biggest fan of classical music. And then when I hear all this world music, I thought, wow, this is amazing. Good boy. She's good for you. That's amazing. And the fact as well, you know, that you're you're hearing maybe some trad and some great Irish music and then some great rock or you might with with John Creedon, you might get um, Leonard Cohen and the like of that, you know, yeah. really brilliant stuff. Yeah. I remember like if there was a new um, album out, when Paul Weller's album came out on Sunset, do you know it of it? Yes, yes, I do, yes. I have it on record there. And the only reason why I bought that record was because of John Creedon. Because there was one week when John Creedon, he had this, um, he was with the Orgy album of the week, he had that on. And uh, I went, well, wow, what a song, what a song by Paul Weller. Because I never knew that was his style. I never heard of him before Paul Weller. And I was listening and he played the likes of Village and on sunset from this from the album and immediately I went to myself I need to buy this record and off I popped to Golden Discs up in Newbridge <laughs> and how do you get the money to buy all the records well I save up like I, I used to t- one guy asked me and I was laughing he asked me why do you spend so much money on records when you could buy sweets and I said to him you a record could last you a lifetime, where sweets could last you five minutes. Oh and my records goodness. are always worth it. Yeah. Now, when I say that, I've seen records for like 100 euro. That's not exactly worth it. But still, 
to spend 20 quid on an album you could listen to and then yeah. pass down to your children. That's brilliant, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And the first book I ever read with hard records in it was, I was so happy that they actually included records in it. It was one on the 1920s. And I was surprised that no other books I ever read, I don't think, had records in it. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what kind of books do you like? Oh, I I love any book that has writing in it. Mm-hmm. I read all about the 1920s. I There's a book that I finished twice, which for me was the best book I've ever read. And for a lot of older children, the same. It's called Wonder by R.J. Policio. And that was all about a boy who had a deformed face and mm-hmm. was teased in school. And it was based on a true story. And the boy's name was August Pullman. And there's an actual person called August Pullman. And I think he's like 30 now. And he has a deformed face. Mm. Wow. That's deep. That's, that's really good going, the fact that you like that. And then come back to, come back to the music. What, if, what is your go-to album then when you want... Oh. When you just kind of, I want to put on something, what would you put on? Go to, oh my God, that's the trickiest question. Anybody could ask me. It depends if I want to relax. Um, just looking over there on my CD collection. Yeah, go on. I'd probably say to relax an album called Chill with Sage. And have you ever heard of the composer Sage, Eric Sage? No. Well, it's not a very popular conductor, but there was an album there called Chill With Sage. And one night my mom and dad told me, this might help you relax. Because I was very hyper that night, reading my book and everything. And I listened to it, and I loved the piano pieces. In it, Gorgeous. Because it also had guitar. Yeah. And I loved that. Then and do you, ever listen to, do you ever listen to Einaudi? Or have you heard of Einaudi? I'm Audi. No, yeah. I never think I've ever heard of that. Yeah, really. that if you like piano and things like that, it's beautiful. Or do you know the movie Soul? Oh, oh my God, I love that movie. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. But what about yeah. the, the music, though, is amazing in it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The whole idea, though, about incorporating jazz into a children's movie, it's basically impossible to do that because yeah. not many children would like music. No, no, I certainly wouldn't like jazz. So, oh, no, 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 no. Amazing thing that they did. So, tell me about the radio. Do you, do you think you'd like to be on the radio? I would love to. That's definitely one of my big goals. Uh, not the biggest, but a very big goal. Um, well, what's the biggest goal? I really actually want to meet John Creedon. Okay. I really do because I watch Creedon's Atlas of Ireland and things, and I just think he's really cool. Yeah. And, I always picture my myself in his studio, and I think it's really, um, I think he's really cool in the sense that he doesn't talk about anything that could offend someone, and he's always having a laugh during the show. Yeah. And also, back to Radio Nova because I'm talking too much about RT Radio One. That's all right. The one, the first time I ever listened listened to Radio Nova which I will remember for probably the rest of my life. And it's one of the silliest ways. I was in my sister's bedroom. She had a new stereo. She's into music too, a bit. Um, She likes more pop stuff though. And we accidentally were tuning it in and we came across Radio Nova. And my dad went, brilliant, Radio Nova. And he turned it on and the music that was playing, I loved it. Great. Um, And... The way they say it's rock, it's not just rock, it's different types of rock. It's metal, America style rock. I think that's brilliant that Radio Nova, they say they're a rock company, yet they still have a, a large variety of music and they're still a rock company. They yeah, still yeah. play rock. Yeah, yeah. And we, 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 we play, some of it can be soft rock as well. Yeah. But we don't, um, you know, and we, we play maybe, you know, some good 80s and things like that, stuff from the 1980s. Yeah. 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 Um, because Nova, it's it's aimed at people slightly older than you. You know what I mean? It's it's aimed at um, like, ma- your mom and dad kind of age, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Adolescence to fifties. <laughs> I think too. You can be on the field. Sorry. I, I'm just saying. I think when you want to, I think you can definitely be on the radio. I think you've you could definitely do it if you wanted to. You've a brilliant way about you. You've lovely way of chatting. Thank I you like your much. style. Thanks very, thanks very much. Yeah, you're welcome. And to do it, Nova, there was one band in particular that really inspired my love of music, yeah. and I mean, really did. ACDC. Go away. The kids used to know me in school for loving ACDC. Yeah. And the one tape that I had of ACDC, and I thought it was better than some of the CDs I had in better quality, was Stiff Upper Lip, which yeah. I used to listen to over and over again. And I used to get so annoyed when the side would end because I'd have to stop listening and go over and switch the sides. So you had it on, you have it on vinyl? I have it on tape. Oh, on tape, um, okay. The, uh, the first time I started collecting vinyl was at my communion. As you know, when you get to communion, you get, you get a good bit of bob. Mm. And I decided I'd go get a record player because mm. I knew my dad had old records and I decided I might be a collector. So I went off to, to and we were traveling for a whole day trying to find record players because this was the time before vinyl was popular. Mm. Or probably at its highest peak because they were all out of stock. Mm. One or the other. <laughs> but I got it. And we found we found some old records upstairs, like some dead Kennedys. And then yeah. we found some of my granddad's records, which were surprisingly good too, like the monkeys. And then I started my collection and I've got a good 30 to 40 records now over good here luck. in the corner of my room. And the good first luck. album I ever bought which in my opinion is one of the greatest but weirdest, very unique album, Pink Floyd The Wall. Oh, I know. That's not weird. I mean, like... Yeah, I, suppose, no, them, I know what you mean, actually. Side, when you get down to the, the very last so um, I, four, yeah, it gets a bit... Yeah, it gets a bit eerie, yeah. Yeah, it does and get eerie, spoil yeah. spoil the album, though. It's a bit creepy. Some well, you know it's a know. story, right? It, the, it, the whole thing is oh, a big yeah. story. You know and that, don't you? The Irish work in it is fabulous. I actually yeah. love it. That mm. I, I, when I first got it, I lay down on my bed like a kid with his comic and I opened it up and I was staring at it for a good 10 minutes just admiring all the artwork. That's and magic. It's one of the most iconic, in my opinion, iconic album covers of all time. There's a yep. couple of those album covers that are implanted in your brain, like ACDC, Back in Black, that album there, and some other really good albums like Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. Do you like Springsteen? Yeah. Just thinking of Springsteen. There's something I need to confess. Mm. I used to call a lot of my, the old, a lot of the old bands that I used to like different names accidentally <laughs> bob dylan was bob dylan yeah uh led zeppelin was led zeppelin <laughs> um, and then I, had that, uh, I said accidentally i said instead of buffalo springfield and um, buffalo springsteen that's all I, right did you ever I call it a lot of the mixed up and I remember the day I asked my mom, could I buy a Led Zeppelin um, yeah. album? Well, we <laughs> how, ran... how do you know about Led Zeppelin? How oh, do you know um, about them? Well, what I do is I go on Spotify, I would see a song, I learn everything about the band, learn what other bands were like it, then learn everything about that band. I know I have Mothership in the back there, yeah. um, which is a double album. And that's the only Led Zeppelin album I have, yet it's the only one I'm ever going to need because it's not a best of, but in my opinion, it is because it's got some amazing tracks on it. Yeah, it is. It is amazing. But if you really want to get into the bones of something like Led Zeppelin, you really need to check out the debut album. It's just called Led Zeppelin. Oh, yeah. I, I saw the iconic um, picture of a Zeppelin, unforgettable since the name. 
<laughs> it's um, it's a and Led Zeppelin four. It's not called four, but everyone calls it four. Uh, it was called the Untitled Album. That's the one with Stairway on it. Like there's a song on there called Going to California. Um, they're oh my goodness, the whole, when you hear those albums as they were meant to be, it's yeah. really special. Big time. Now, when I was saying that Led Zeppelin was the best album, I don't mean now that was the best album, but definitely. I remember I once wa was watching on this show called Pawn Stars. Yeah. Um, that this guy had a Led Zeppelin um, album that was signed. Yeah. And it was a first edition and it was bought in like the 1970s when it was just came out. And yeah. I went, how cool would it be to actually have that? Amazing. And also, I saw this other thing about records that a guy had like this, this a room this size big. Other thing about records that a guy had like this, this a room this size bigger. All the walls were filled with shelves filled with records to the brim. I bet you that's what John Creedon has. <laughs> yeah. Room like that. I I I picture him just sliding on the CDs, like, immediately. Then he has everything <laughs> in his setup. Then he's just going, dum, 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 got it. You, yeah, but you know, um, on the radio, everything's played from a computer now. Yeah, MP3 is taken over. It's not no, really it's, it, no, 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 no. It's it's not not so much MP3s. You see, the on, the, on what radio stations use, it's the same quality as vinyl or cds but it's 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 much much higher than mp3 we don't use mp3s because they they don't sound well uh, on the radio they don't sound well broadcast so so but the, so there's not like john doesn't have to go and, and physically get cds i'm sure he does play a few cds but all of the radio stations now use these really fancy computer systems yeah i was just going uh and it shouldn't be video killed radio star at the moment with Spotify and Deezer and everything. It should be MP3. <laughs> or maybe, maybe just streaming killed the radio star. Yeah, streaming. streaming. All that now. Yeah. That YouTube now but has crashed. Here's a funny everything. thing, though. Here's a funny one. You know, officially, streaming in Ireland is 8% of listenership, 8, right? No. And radio listenership is 83. You're kidding. Yeah, radio I, is still... I bet you 50% of that radio listening is Radio Nova. No, I <laughs> wish it was, but it's not. <laughs> Fine, it's 51% then. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So come on, give me some more, give me some questions. What do you want to know? Well, I want to know, is that your house that you're recording in or the studio? Because I can't differ because you've got all the tech there. This is my house. I just yeah. noticed there in the background with all your technology that you've got the thing with the light of buttons where you're turning up all the different knobs. Yeah, and that's the mixer, well, yeah. You can imagine with my music taste, I asked for something for Christmas and it turned out to be this. Oh, wow. So what are you playing on that? So what happens is I can get down? this to my laptop. I can yeah. use a software called Ableton 11 Lite. I'll see if I can share screens here. And um, it's a really good app, like a really good app that allows me to be able to connect up the MIDI lab and able to use the MIDI lab on the laptop. Yeah. Play music through it. Yeah. Like synth or piano or electric yeah. piano or whatever. And then I can export it. And then I can export it again as an MP3. I can put it on a USB that I have there, and if I want to, I can put it on a social media site called BandLab, mm. and I can publish it to the public. I can Great. also put it up on, let's say, Twitter or something, because I can put it as an MP3. So and when you do your, your radio station, your online radio station, how do you do that? Audacity. Audacity all the way. Like, I'll show you here. Um, this is what Ableton looks like here. Um, but Audacity is kind of a simpler version of this. Mm -hmm. um, so really, Audacity is kind of like this style, where it has more 
that um, you have more of that you have the recording of the track. That's what I use for yeah, cool. um, usually uh, making my LKR radio sessions. But the annoying thing is that I found out pretty quickly is setting up this microphone. I think it taken me around half a year to get this properly set up. Um, because there's a power bank there and there's pop-up plugs here that when I bought when I got the official setup, it didn't come with a lot of these things. So I had to oh. we had to get a lot of these things and attach it up. And so far, because of all of these different things, we've only gotten three episodes of LKR sessions, unfortunately. Oh. And everybody in my class is asking me, when's the next one out? When's the next one out? When I've got 19 subscribers. Five of them is one person. So I don't know why they're asking. <laughs> and the rest of I them is me, da, me sister. I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of um, weird audacity in the sense that each version is very different. It's starting to stabilize now, the, the versions. But when I have this old Windows 7 laptop that would fault to open up, the audacity on that was better than the one I have now. Yeah, Simply yeah. Because if I had audacity on this, the Windows 7 version, and I was recording, I could record this. But And I could, and I, let's say there's like, um, there's something outside that's happening. That wouldn't record it. It would record the stereo on my laptop instead of Yes, that's right. Yeah, now, yeah. And I used to record songs on that, and I'd mash them up. And make something utterly stupid out of them, but now mm. I can't do that simply because. Of it. So yeah, they've changed some stuff in Audacity. All right, they definitely did. Um, what actually, what do you guys use in the studio? I well, we use a, a thing called Adobe Edition. You use Adobe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do, that... but a lot of people use Pro Tools. Have you heard of Pro Tools? Yeah, I because one time I went to Windmill Lane. Um, oh yeah, and, I saw your picture. Yeah. Just, they showed Pro Tools on that. And yeah. I noticed that there's one thing that everybody, everybody who's not in a radio station uses when they're recording Apple software. And I don't understand why. Well, because it's really, really solid. It doesn't fall over like Windows does. That, that's a fair point. Because and also, you can't, you can't give Apple stuff viruses. You know the way Windows can get... They, they, you can get viruses and things like that. Yeah. So Apple can't doesn't get viruses. They, it's, it's, it's magnificent like that. Yeah. That's and it's just crazy. really stable um, when it comes to performing uh, and and recording music and things like that. Way more stable than than um, than Windows. That that explains a lot because everywhere I've it gone does. now with studios, all it is is Apple. Yeah. I think we're, we're going to maybe go away from that. And I want to ask you, what was it like when you first started interviewing people and being on the radio? I know you were 16 when yeah. you were in the hospital and you started. And you were saying that you froze when you saw the Mike Live sign. Yeah. Something that I was reading. With that, before that, were you on anything? Did you, um, were you ever talking to people like I am now? Well, I tell you, we didn't have, when I was your age, I, I wanted to be on the radio, just like you do. And I, there was no real, there was no internet. There was no internet. So we couldn't, you know, talk to people on, on the net and we couldn't make little podcasts. We couldn't do anything like that. So the only thing I had was uh, a little mixer and two turntables on my desk in my bedroom at home and I had a microphone and I had a little red light just like that one there. The I've um, one here one back there but it's too bright to come in from Zoom. Oh yeah, yeah. So and what I would do, I would do radio shows in my bedroom. That that was it. And nobody heard them and that's probably a good thing. But the <laughs> fact that you're able to do your stuff online and, and you can get out there and people can subscribe. It's amazing. Oh, 19 of them. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, it's, it's re it's re and the fact that, you know, your classmates are asking you for more and things like that. So, yeah, I used to be terrified of, of that red light when it would go on because, 
I knew other people could hear me and now it doesn't bother me at all. Now I love the red light being on. I love it. I've got a, I, I've got red cheeks here talking to you and I'm jealous. Of, I'm sorry, not jealous. I know I messed up and I just did. You didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, you haven't messed up at all. Actually, just seeing with your little, um, your recorder and your turntables, I yeah. have a little thing in there and they're rare, but it's so cute. It's this little thing a dictaphone, but mm. you don't put cassettes in it, you put mini cassettes. In it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, tiny, yeah. tiny little things. Yeah, and I'm really annoyed because I wrote on the title on it, and now whenever I go to take off the sticker to put a new one on, I can't because it'll damage the tape because it's so oh. <laughs> that's brilliant, though. Little maybe it's a little Olympus machine, is it? I, do, I think, um, I don't know because it's in my wardrobe and I okay. wish I just had a very, very long arm to just reach <laughs> in there and get it. And it's in a drawer in the wardrobe. So That's all right. Annoying, but, um, so what microphone have you got there? What's your microphone? I've got a gear from Music One. So um, it's a big studio one. That, oh, that yeah. Down, way down there. Um, Brilliant. See my uh, dressing gown. Then. It goes way down and it's very long. And I'm actually talking through it now. So that's probably yeah. expected. But we only got it working today again, as as you were saying with all the problems. So, yeah, your your mum was saying that she was having some problems getting your mic set up, yeah. but you're all done now. Yeah, and now I can use Audacity with it. Um, brilliant. And that's that's really br brilliant for me because I've been meaning to fix it for forever. All done now. Yeah, it really so, is all there, done now. So, so there's I, no excuses. What you need to be doing now is getting back on the internet and doing your radio show exactly. on your radio station and, and putting out your podcasts. All right? Yeah, and I was thinking of going on Spotify with podcasts, but I went... I could get way more views on YouTube than Spotify. More people yeah. use YouTube than Spotify. So I may as well so, see what I've got for the moment. And if yeah. I might be helpful on Spotify, I might think about it. Good boy. Very good. Because have you any other questions for me? Because I'm going to have to go now and get my dinner. <laughs> get your dinner. Um, what was your favourite moment ever recording? And probably what was the also the funniest thing that ever happened to you on the breakfast show that you used to work on? Oh my goodness! Um, Probably there was a lot of funny moments there. Oh, there were so funny moments. There was one moment where the guy who was presenting the show with me fell asleep because he'd been out very, very late, and he fell asleep on the floor underneath the, the studio desk. That was very funny. Um, oh my god! No, why would you do? Why there was a good time. Um, my wife was doing the, the radio show with me, but when she stopped doing the radio show because she was going to have um, a, a baby, our, our daughter, um, I decided to see what it would be like to have the pains of having a baby. And I got a machine into the studio and they strapped me up with this machine to make me have all these pains that a woman would have. And it was crazy sore. And it was very, very funny. Um, oh and then there was a time... There was one time I, I was working in a radio station called Q102. Do you know that one? Oh, yeah, I've heard of it. I've heard of it that once. Yeah. And there's awesome another station. Tell me and more about Q102. Well, no, I was just going to tell you, though, that there's one called 98FM. Do you know that one? Yes, I remember because I was reading about you and you mentioned the 98FM, yeah. But when I went to 98FM, I called it Q102 and I got into so much trouble. Can you imagine? You that's like oh my god, you went from you went on to 98 FM and called it Q102. Yeah, you yeah. you ba you basically literally nearly got fired from your job. I there. did nearly get fired, yes. <laughs> that must have been mortifying. Mortifying, you're absolutely right. I was scarlet. Yeah, I got into a lot of trouble for that. I can only imagine that um mm. Like uh, you're somebody's in the car park of Q, 
of <laughs> FM. We already called it there. Q102. The, yeah, yeah. And they're in the, they're in their car and they're listening to the radio and they hear you and you, you're saying, um, um, here, here, guys, welcome to Q102. And then immediately she look the p- person who's in the car looks out the window and sees you being thrown out the window. <laughs> <laughs> you can only imagine though. Yeah, oh, oh, the I've been showing you the dirty oh. finger looking at you. So, do you want to talk on the radio or do you want to play music? I think I want to do both, really. I, I, yeah. I really like blabbing on. <laughs> you do, you do. I really do. Like music as well. Yeah, I think you can do it all. Because I think you're great. Listen, fair play to you. And if you have any more questions along the line, you can. Um, Drop me a line. You can get your mum to send me a message on Twitter or whatever, yeah? Thank you so much, Marcy, actually. Okay. Bye, Marcy. Listen, take care of yourself, and we'll see you on the radio. Bye. See you, Logan. Bye. See ya. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Logan Sounds Off. You can follow me on X... Facebook and Instagram at Logan Sounds Off. And don't forget to subscribe and not miss any more cool episodes. Bye guys!